There's a lot of misinformation about what Thousand Trails has and hasn't done amidst the pandemic. Today we're going to give you the facts. Pools open! <laughs> Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. We RV pursuing freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys. It is. And there is so much that we have to tell you because we're getting all these emails saying, hey, we hear that Thousand Trails isn't going to open their parks until phase five. Right. I mean, we're hearing a lot of things. And so we took a lot of time to research just the facts for you guys, calling balls and strikes about what they have done, what they haven't done. We also have an announcement about our very first camp out. Um, and want to get a feeling on how many guys would like to come and camp with us this summer. It was a really big day today because the pool finally opened at Thousand Trails. We're going to share that with you guys and we had a lot of fun today. Make no mistake, a lot of RVers were totally left stranded via this pandemic. And we noticed that there were a couple commonalities. Number one, a lot of the RVers that kind of got hosed in this situation found themselves mid transit. The other thing that we noticed that really impacted this a lot were those RVers that were in states in which the governor said, hey, camping is not essential, close all parks, including privately owned ones. And so it's really overwhelming because you had a lot of government parks that were being closed, state and national parks were closing down. But the private sector, it, that was more iffy. We didn't know what the private sector was going to do. And what Thousand Trails did was really based on the state you were located in, which means that if you were located in a state where you were in a Thousand Trails park and everyone had to leave, that had more to do with the state you were located in because someone a couple states away was fine to stay. You guys know we've had a love-hate relationship with yeah. Thousand Trails, yeah. but Thousand Trails, we call them like we see them, guys, balls and strikes, and we literally did dig in, do the homework, yeah. because we don't want people being scared. There's enough, there's enough fake news going on out there without getting more of it. Oh, yeah, it's pretty scary out there. It's like, ah! Yeah, yeah, people are really freaking out. And the RV Odd Squad just buried us with emails. Mm -hmm. And so we we felt responsible yeah. to get, you know, find out the correct information and then report it to you guys. So just the facts, it was around March 16th, I believe. If you were a Thousand Trails member, you should have received an email where they were talking about what they were going to do amongst the COVID crisis and how they were handling it. And this did change. So one of the things that they did was on the very top of their website, there's a COVID COVID page where they're constantly updating it and they're listing what they're doing. So this kind of happened in stages. The first stage was when they said, okay, no groups of 10 or more. Then they started closing down amenities. So no amenities at all, all right. were open. And then they said in certain parks, you know, we're no longer taking new reservations. So they were taking steps and this gradually happened and it was chaotic but they were following suit with guidelines. We're grateful that Thousand Trails did and, and Encore Parks did lock the parks down and not allow people in. Remember at that point, they are responsible for the yeah. safety of their campers. Mm -hmm. And you just don't know where people are driving in from. The two big lies that we heard or the two big things that were complete misinformation was number one, that Governor DeSantis told people to leave his state. That never happened. No, he was saying, if you're in the epicenter, please don't come into He didn't our want state. people coming in yeah to yeah. the state because yeah. a lot of New Yorkers brought stuff into Florida. Yeah, because and naturally I would want to leave New York too. Like I can see both sides of the equation. The other big piece of misinformation was is that Thousand Trails is going to make the same amount of money whether they open or they close. And yeah. nothing could be further from the truth, guys. Thousand Trails makes money when RVers are coming in. Not only are they private, but they also have public spots. So Thousand Trails wants to open, but they do have a responsibility to keep their campers safe. Yeah, and so if you are staying at one of the green parks, which is Thousand Trails, most of those sites are open for members, but they do hold a couple of sites open for non-members right. so they can invite them in and hopefully encourage them to become members. Right. If you are in a blue park, the Encore Trails Collection add-on, most of those spots are open to the public yes. and then they hold a small portion of those for members. Yep. So those parks really lost a lot of money because most of their influx comes in from either nightly stays or weekly or monthly rentals. So the notion that they 
make just as much money is not true. So if you were at a green park, the way that they handled it was that they did allow you to extend your stay. If you were at an encore park, typically you'd have to pay to extend your stay, but they did provide a deep discount yeah. um, for those. So it was inconvenient in that you did have to pay, but they didn't, didn't make you pack up and leave either. You got to stay at that park as long as it t took until that state opened up. Unless the governor kicked you out. Exactly, which thank God never happened. What's Some that? people finance their membership. Now when you purchase the membership, you can pay it in full. Or you can finance it. Or you can finance it. But as far as just stopping um, something that you finance, that's not going to happen. I think it needs to be said, a lot of these parks wouldn't have been opening that soon really anyways. Yeah, and that's... So some of those openings were delayed a little bit, but we're not talking about parks that are open year round necessarily. Right. The parks that were closed when the pandemic hit, their closing has extended a couple of weeks to maybe one or two states a month. And again, this depends on what the governor does, guys. They're going off of what the governors of each state does where that park is located. And here's the other thing. So the last we checked, and this is subject to change because heaven forbid there's another outbreak anywhere, you know, right. they reserve the right to change this. The whole but, thing is fluid. Yes, but last we checked, um, everything should be open, hopefully crossing fingers, June 1st. So New York is scheduled to open May 15th. Yep. Um, Which is New, amazing. New Jersey, that's still in the work because I guess that has a hot spot, hopefully June 1st. Washington, May 16th. Ohio, May 30th, and California, May 15th. And so Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, they're open right now. Again, this is as of right now, and you can check on the Thousand Trails website, check their COVID response page, and they're updating this. I mean, they are asking you to do certain things. Like, please, if you can make a phone call into the office, do right. that instead of walk in. Right. Um, at one point, they even went so far as to deliver the mail so that we wouldn't walk into the office and collect our mail. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Our community, the park that we're staying at, which right now, which is an encore park, the community is really pulled tight together and we've gotten yeah. to know each other. We all do a lot of walking every day. We do a lot of um, chalk painting on the roads, yeah, right? Yeah, creative community. Yeah, it's been a really cool community. And one of the things we actually believe that Thousand Trails has done a really good job at communicating with the public. We've gotten emails giving yeah. us heads up on everything. Generally speaking, I think the thing we love most about the Thousand Trails are the actual people, right? Um, generally speaking, big corporations, not so much. Right, soulless. I do think they handle this pretty well when you consider all things. Right. Um, and they really allowed the discretion amongst the state. So what we experienced having the pool open is something that in another place you're not going to have necessarily. Exactly. And again, we're going to share those protocols with you that we're all learning as we go. Yeah. This is all brand new. None of us have been through a pandemic Social before. Social distance, pool swimming. Social distancing, but they've got all these posters outside. They've got rules. They're only allowing 25 people into the pool at a time. You're not allowed to move the chaise lounge chairs. Even if you can want to turn it for the sun, you can't touch them. They've got to stay right where they are. They've distanced those chairs 10 to 15 feet apart. And they've asked you not to get close to anybody unless they're the people you came in with. Right, with your family members, and right? And they shut it down multiple times during the day to clean it. And then they ask that if you've been there once, don't come back again right um, let somebody else have a turn because there are so few times you know so yep. i mean i think it's pretty it's pretty funny how do you social distance in a pool i know <laughs> <laughs> and sage doesn't really understand social distancing we've struggled with her oh, because yeah. she sees kids and she just runs towards she them you know just they're just play. they're full of love and they just want to play but but you know the other adults know this a big thing that I did want to point out, let's say that your Thousand Trails membership is creating a financial burden for you. So assuming that it is paid in full, if you look in your contract, Section V, inactive status, so you can make your membership inactive. It has to be a minimum of a year, and I think there's a $75 fee, but you don't pay the the yearly dues, which is like 500 bucks. Right, the yearly dues it, and the assessments. It depends, mm -hmm. yeah. But basically, you can make your membership inactive for up to five years. Yeah, and so, you can do it twice yeah. during that five-year period. You could save yourself that yearly due yeah, four or by five hundred digging, bucks. In your, digging in your contract and going inactive. Yep. Unfortunately, it doesn't work if you financed your membership. Right, you're still going to have to pay. Yeah, but 
If you haven't, just for those that are incurring a financial burden, we wanted to let you know that that's an option. As far as Florida was concerned, the staff was considered essential. And that's another thing that is worth mentioning as far as the staff goes, you know, they would have had full license to do massive layoffs. And to our knowledge, hours have been cut. Um, some places you may have been furloughed, but for the most part, they've actually kept their staff, which yeah. is pretty which kudos, is cool. kudos is for that. Good for them. So we got a notification because we got some inside information with one of the guys that works at the park we're at that the pool was going to open on Wednesday. Stop giving away our sources. Well, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, they actually opened the pool a day earlier. And so we got really, this is a big deal at the Condon household mm -hmm. because Sage loves to swim. She yeah. loves going to the swimming pool. So we got really excited yeah. about it. It was interesting. One of the cool things is not a lot of people know because they don't check their email. So we got the email <laughs> that it opened a day earlier. They laid out clearly what those rules are. Oh, yeah. So we threw on our bathing suits and headed over to the pool. Let's go to the pool. It was so wonderful to be outside getting some sun. Everybody in the pool was happy. Yeah. They would, everybody was just really happy and having a lot of fun. Sage had a great time. Mercedes got some sun. I got some sun. And if you can't see it on our faces, mm -hmm. we're just feeling great. Remember, guys, this event will end. The pandemic will end. Yeah. Things will gonna, are going to open up again. It's been a crazy mm -hmm. couple of months, but we felt it pretty important that we bring you the you know, the most accurate information we can, especially when we we feel a little bit of a responsibility that we help convince some people to do the Thousand Trails membership because yeah. we know it's a no-brainer. If you full-time and you want full hookups, Thousand Trails is the way to go. Yeah. You know, you can camp for under 10 bucks a night. If there is no competition. If you use it, yeah. that's the key. There is no competition. It, there's some good things, there's some bad things, but sure. guess what? For 10 bucks a night, you can't complain about much. So yeah, we with felt a responsibility. Yeah, full hookups. So we felt the responsibility to talk to the RV Odd Squad, let them know what we thought, and share our experience with how Thousand Trails has uh, handled this, along with Equity Lifestyle Properties, who mm -hmm. owns Thousand Trails. Yeah. And we think they've done a phenomenal job. Had they closed, we would have been in big trouble. So now for our two big announcements. Yep. First off, as we're going live tonight and to answer questions uh, to the RV Odd Squad about mm -hmm. what's going on seven and what Eastern. we found out, seven o'clock Eastern time. Four Pacific, I think. Four Pacific, so hope mm -hmm. that you guys will be there. That'll be a lot of fun. We love doing lives and Sage loves it too. Yeah. And also, we're actually putting together our first camp out mm -hmm. where we've talked to the park that we're at. We're trying to get a head count on how many people would be interested in coming down to Florida. Now, granted, this is going to be hot. like August, so it's the, <laughs> the hottest month of the year to be here. But the pool's open. The pool's open, the ocean's open, and there's hardly anybody here because it is so hot. Yeah. But you guys know we're stuck here for a while while Sage gets the treatment that she needs. And so yeah. if you guys would come down and visit us, we thought it'd be a lot of fun to cook out. Camp out I've looked at renting some boats, like a big boat to take 40 or 50 of us out. Yeah. We just have no idea of how many of you might be interested in coming down to visit us. So yeah. if you can just, in the comments, if you're interested in doing something like that, if we'll you'd like to come down out. to Florida, yeah. we'll get a head count and see if the park we're at would work because we love this park. We consider this park our home park. Yeah. Um, and if not, we'll look into a bigger park. But yeah. we have no idea if you guys are even interested. Yeah. So if you are, <laughs> just let us know. Yeah. Is that it? Um, otherwise... We'll see you tonight at the live, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central. God bless everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.